You are listening to Backstage Pass Podcast, hosted by Hannah Trigwell and brought to you by Tommy. Janet Devlin, hello. When you first started out, what did you, did you busk? Did you? When I very, 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 very first started, I was like 15. Um, I started on YouTube. I posted covers from my front room when I was 15. Right. And that led to one of them doing well. I think it got like 20, 30,000 views. And in the early days of YouTube, this was like that tw- was big. 2010. I was like, oh, <laughs> don't, I'll, sorry, I can't hear you over the sound of I'm an <laughs> internet celebrity. Um, so it did, it did really well. But then um, my mum basically was just, this is how the whole X Factor thing happened. She's just like, uh, why don't you send one of your videos into X Factor? They're taking video auditions. And I was like, oh, I don't know. She's like, what's the worst that can happen? They were saying no. And I was like, fair enough, Patricia, with that logic, go on ahead. Uh, so she sent the video in. Just uh, such a great name. I know, Patricia. Pat. <laughs> I love I her love that. When we were like writing a song together, like ages ago, and yeah. you said something like, you were like, okay, Patricia, you're like talking about some story that had happened. And you said, <laughs> yeah. okay, Patricia. And I was thinking... Is that like, you know, when people say, okay, Karen? Yeah. <laughs> I have okay Karen's, my mom, so much, though. Great name. Yeah, sorry, I just completely interrupted oh, no. your story about X Factor then. Oh, no, honestly, it just, like, X Factor was a thing. It's one of those things that, like, you know, the ball started rolling and I was just constantly waiting for, like, so when's, when's, the, when's somebody going to slap me and wake me up because, like, this is going well? Um... So then after the show, um, a few record companies offered me contracts, but none of them respected the fact that I wanted to be an artist. Like, I actually wanted to write my own stuff. Everybody was like, here, we'll compile an album for you. You'll sing it. You'll do well. And then on the next record, you can write yeah. your own stuff. And I'm like, oh, so you mean when I flop on my butthole, then I can write my own stuff. Cool story, bruh. You've been personally open, and I think that really leads into you having such a devoted fan base oh for sure like I never in a million years thought that anybody would care about this kind of stuff or like Mm. like every time I've been like super honest I've I've been really surprised that it's been received well yeah and there's such a fear isn't there before you do something like that there's such a fear that like <laughs> yeah. this could potentially end it or this is the moment that's breaking it this is it this yeah. is when i'm gonna get like twenty thousand people and follow me at once and yeah. like oh my god but it absolutely. never happens it no, never happens and but i think do you ever it's just do the... it shows you're a real person you know have you ever done the post and then close your laptop and walk away yeah <laughs> That's my favorite. That's my favorite move. I'm like, I'm going to the cinema. Bye. I think for me, what made me really especially want to be honest was the fact that like that video of my audition still gets watched to this day and still gets discovered to this day, which is phenomenal. And it's like my best form of PR. But I think the downside is that um, some people really watch that and believe that like, I'm some sort of above people person that like I can do no wrong that I'm 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 like such a pure little human that must be protected at all costs and like unscathed by the world because I'm from the middle of nowhere and I don't know what real life is um and I just wanted to really I think I get joy out of uh smashing illusions I really do. Like, whenever somebody has a preconceived idea of me that's incorrect, I'm like, what have I told you? <laughs> that that's not true. So, yeah. but I, I like that it's, if people have, like, a certain idea of who I am, I think I, I, think I like when people realise that you can't judge a book by its cover, you mm. know? Like, uh, I because uh, I think people do this like way too much and you can either choose to buy into it like I could live my whole life pretending I'm a holier than thy person and yeah. th- that I'm clean and pristine and and like that that's how it felt for me for years as well like just um because when people would be like oh do you drink do you smoke do you do drugs I'm like no 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 I'm clean living blah, blah, blah. It, it's like they're like oh she's so pure well and it's like no it's because I'm an alcoholic <laughs> I know a lot of artists who it are extremes of those so like 
Mm-hmm. Either either really go along with the, you know, I, I've never had a bad thought in my life. Yeah. I've never even thought a bad thing, let alone done a bad thing. Yeah. Versus people who are completely the other way and just super open about any any bad thing that they've that they've ever thought or said or done. Um like for me, I, I had a moment a couple of well, uh, maybe like a few years ago now actually, when I was like, um I realized that I wasn't swearing online. Uh <laughs> To be, to be respectful to my parents, basically. Um, yeah. Because, and it's not that my parents don't swear. It's just that if, like, every time I was about to to like drop an f bomb or anything, I would have this. Oh, but I don't. You know, if my <laughs> if my dad sees this or, <laughs> or if my mom, they might think that it's not great to do that on online. You know? Yes. Yeah. No. I totally get it. And I was like, it. actually, my God, like I'm. A, I'm grown like I'm an adult I should yeah. I should either choose to to be this like perfect thing that like never swears and is like super nice about everything all the time or mm. just be myself and I just yep. knew that if I continued to censor myself completely all the time that would burn me out online like it's I, the pressure um, the pressure yeah. of that is like astronomical like yeah. to try and be something that you're not and like I still live under a bit of that pressure of like yeah absolutely the the weight I feel like sometimes as well like I live in the shadow of my younger self as well like (laughs) because people love 16 year old me so much that it's like I can't live up to my younger self guys like (laughs) this isn't fair like this that's when you were pure and like yeah exactly I don't I don't know so I'm not gonna like put words into your mouth but I don't know how like X Factor or any other TV show edits things to look a certain way, but mm. we only saw a tiny bit of you as well. Yeah, literally. Um, it's it's it really is a case of like um, I think I've seen it more with other contestants. I'm not going to say like who, but like you'd see how you were there and you were in the moment and you were present, and then you mm. watched how it was edited and you're like. This is this exact not how that went down. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, I think that's, you know, well, that is what's scary about it. Like, the amount of times where somebody said something about what's happened on that show and I've gone, oh, no, that's like, it actually didn't happen like this. This is how it happened. And they freak out. They're like, mm. are you kidding me? I'm like, I don't know how to tell you this, but it's TV. It's, yeah. it's, it's not that deep. I mean, I tried to quit music for, and I lasted three days. <laughs> But I think that's because you love music, Gen- genuinely love it. That but uh, taught me the biggest lesson of my life because I was like, no, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. I'm not putting this album out. I don't want to be. A f- I don't want to like lead people down. Like I'm not. I'm not supposed to be an artist. This isn't my way of life. And X, all of these things. Yeah. So I made it literally. In those three days as well, I literally was like, oh, so I can I can start this wee side project. Oh, bluegrass band and oh I can always <laughs> call your man and we can do some stuff together and oh I could definitely play a wee gig there couldn't I like that be I'm like Janet you haven't even quit music like you dope <laughs> you absolute dope like so you know after those three days I was like no I actually yeah. love this more than life itself like c- congratulations you can't quit music but it was the f- most That's free- a nice realization though it was so- sometimes I've questioned like am I still you know, if, if I've put, like, a bunch of songs out and they've not done well or something, like, am I still doing this just because it feels like it's my identity and it's important to carry on? Or, like, am I doing this because I actually love music? And after only after taking breaks do I realise, oh, it's because I love music. Exactly. And I think there's some people that really, like, frown upon an artist questioning their place in the industry. And that makes me so angry because it's like, what, so you've never in your life thought about quitting something that you love Mm. um because for me in those three days it was the most freeing feeling for three days to be not janet devlin the artist but to discover that janet devlin the person is an artist and i had i had to come back to that go back into myself as just a person and then go oh no 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 this is a part of me and and yeah. I and I really really enjoy it, and I'll keep on doing it until it stops being fun. And in those three days, obviously, I reevaluated how I was working, 
what style I was working in. And I sat down with my teams and we discussed like ways that would, you know, help me enjoy what I was doing more. Because I, I just, I was doing a few bits that I wasn't, that weren't bringing me joy. Mm. Um, and obviously at the end of the day as well, it is sometimes a job and there will be things that you do and you don't enjoy them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's just life. Um, but there was definitely a few bits and bobs that I was like, that is draining my soul. <laughs> so <laughs> if I could just like minimize that would be great. But it was great because it opened a dialogue and it allowed me to like reevaluate things because yeah, like I'm not going to be working the same way as I worked when I was 17, 18 years old. Like I'm, I'm 25 now, like the way I work and how efficiently I work and, and the style of working is going to be so different. So I, I really needed to actually sit down and go, so how, how do we want this to go? You know, yeah. everything yeah. just down to like when people would be calling me during the day. Cause like I was in those days getting up at 5 30, 6 AM. Um, and then call on my day quits at about four thirty. Okay. Um, That's still I, a long day though. It is a, a very really long day. It is, yeah. But like, I don't, I don't mind working like that. But then I would maybe get a call at about like seven o'clock, or then get an email at like midnight, and I'm like, no. Nope. I saw this <laughs> isn't the. I I understand that like the music industry doesn't have a schedule, but like you'll get an email back at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes like I've been working on a song and I'm I'm trying to get this thing right and like and actually by the end of the day I figure out that I've I've just been doing it wrong but I figured out the right way to do it. But it feels like the whole day was a waste. Yeah, but like you forget you wouldn't have got to the, you wouldn't have got to X if you didn't go through yeah. Y and you're like, oh. It's kind of like because I'm so used to putting everything online, if I if I don't have anything to show for the end of it, like physically, you know, yes. show. Oh my God, I'm like, yes. oh, like today might as well have not happened. Yeah, literally. I get that with like email days or like, interview days like where you're typing or you're doing phoners and stuff and you're like what did I even do today it's like you haven't stopped dude like chill your beans Janet Devlin what is (laughs) your track of the week Ooh, track of the week it's a good one what was I listening to before I came on here because it was a vibe okay 50 50 by Vantage it's that it's that little bop from none other than TikTok and but it is it's a vibe how's it go 50-50. 50-50. 50-50 <laughs> Okay. Like, put that on and tell me you're not having a good time because you're having <laughs> a good time whether you like it or not. I'm going to check it out. <laughs> and then as a last question, what <laughs> is the best lesson that you've learned so far in your career? Best lesson I've learned in my career. It's a biggie. It's about being yourself. Um, because I've watched so many people crumble under the pressure of being what people expect them to be. I've fallen mm. under the pressure of being what people expected me to be. And I th- honestly think in my life and in my career, I'm doing my best. I'm riding high when I'm being myself and I'm being wholeheartedly myself. It's the same in relationships. You know, if yeah. you're dating someone and you are 100% yourself, they tend to do the best, you know? Yeah. Um, so I... And I know it sounds cheesy and I know it's been said a million times, so just be yourself. And it's even more confusing when you don't know who you are. (laughs) But as long as you feel like you're not putting on an act, then you're being yourself. Like, don't think too deeply of like, who am I at my core? (laughs) Like all that kind of stuff. Just as long as you're not pretending to be something you're not, then you're being Mm. yourself. And I think the reason why I think that's so important, it's that if you... If you were to write a song tomorrow and put it out and it wasn't your vision, you didn't like it and somebody else made you do it and you thought the only reason you put it out was because you thought it would do well and it flops on its butthole, you'd be like, why did I even bother acting like someone else? Whereas if something is, if you put something out that's wholeheartedly you, that you love and you enjoy, the chances of that doing better are higher. And even if it doesn't do well, you're still like, well... I stand by it. I love that thing. It's yeah. me and I love it. And I think that's that's it. Because then if, if disappointment happens, which sometimes inevitably it will, you don't take it so personal. Yeah. Yeah, and you just love the thing that you put out anyway. So it kind of it kind of matters less if it's like successful exactly. with other people or not. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. And whenever somebody gives you a compliment about it, you believe it. Because you're like, yeah. Whereas if you put the other thing out that you don't believe in and somebody gives you a compliment, you're like, are you sure about that? <laughs> Jesus. And then you start falling into imposter syndrome and everything's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Thanks so much for speaking to me today, Janet. I hope you have a great day. Aw, thank you. And you too. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Be sure to hit subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you think. And I will see you next time on Backstage Pass. Thank you.